G'day guys and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Joycey and I are getting together to do a rare edition of True Footy Reacts. Obviously there's been a lot of drama going on in the AFL in the past week, a lot of stuff to react to. Some good, some bad, actually mostly bad, uh, particularly if you're an Eagles fan like me, Joycey. First thing that happened probably that we should discuss, the Adelaide Crows situation and Don Pike stepping down, obviously. We're led to believe, Joycey, that he stood down voluntarily uh, and it was his own decision. Uh, what's your impression of that whole situation there at Adelaide? Do you think he should have kept his job? Um, as in, do you think he, on merit, was good enough to keep his job? Um, and also, do you think he voluntarily stood down? To be honest, Adelaide Crows are one that I find really hard, Jesse, to, to gauge where they should be on the ladder. I honestly have no idea. They have a pretty balanced side. You know, they got semi-decent forwards, pretty good mid, in fact, really good mid, semi-decent defenders, but I don't know, they just can't seem to put it all together. I'm not surprised that Don Pike has moved on, to be honest. I think there was a good chance he would have been pushed if he didn't jump. I agree with you. I backed him in on the podcast a few weeks ago uh, saying that I believed he was a good coach and that he should keep his job. It sounds like the culture at Adelaide just got a little bit rotten, and that's just from an outside perspective. Obviously, last year they had that weird preseason camp, um, and then it just... Uh, was that it? last year or the year before? I th no, it was the preseason of 2018. Obviously, they have they've had an exodus pretty much since they've played in the grand final. They've yeah. lost uh, the coach now. T um Taylor Walker, I nearly call him Tom Walker, has stood down as captain, whether voluntarily or not. Um, and they've got a whole range of players that might be requesting trades. So I'll list you a couple: Alex Keith, Jenkins, Hugh Greenwood, Rory Laird. Sam Jacobs and Eddie Betts all rumoured to be exploring trade options. And I don't even know if I named every single player there. So what do you make of this exodus? How do you think Adelaide should approach this offseason? What should their strategy be? You know, it's a bit, of, a bit of a tough one. It all depends where the new coach, I guess, rates the list. Does he think he can come in and they can have an impact and make finals? If so, it's got to be about retention. It's got to be, be about keeping those players. I wouldn't be surprised if they do a pretty thorough um, investigation and try and do a bit of analysis into finding out whether they think they're good enough. If they're not, you know, a lot of those players I think actually would almost probably be worth moving on. You know, if you can get something for Eddie Betts or something really good for, I do really rate Brad Crouch, but you know, everything just depends on what you can get back. If they were to do a rebuild, then I think a few of those players they'd probably want to let go. Jenkins, again, another one, tall forwards, you know, they're worth worth a bit in the market and you know if they could get some decent picks out of him I'd be pretty tempted to move him on if I was Adelaide. I mean there's two ways to look at it. Uh, Adelaide had I believe the second best injury list this year and they had the second oldest list at least they did late during the season uh, and obviously to miss the finals is a massive fail for them to do it two years in a row as well is particularly concerning so I think there's definitely a case to be made for some freshness. That being said I'm just a little bit nervous about huge scale changes and a mass exodus I think can devastate a club in my opinion teams in recent years have maybe cut a little bit too deep I did sort of suggest maybe Fremantle had done that a few years ago uh, Fremantle fans disagree with me but I think Adelaide or some some Fremantle fans disagree with me not necessarily all but some people thought Fremantle should have cut harder my belief is just that you could cause some instability within the club if you cut too hard and particularly a player like Rory Laird who might be moving on for a top 10 pick that to me spells potential disaster look like I said for me it just depends what they can get back if they get a table a really good offer for Rory Laird then you got you got to got to take it but it just depends what they're going to get back with Adelaide it's like you hear about premiership hangovers all the time. Have you ever heard of a runners-up hangover? Because this seems like the biggest runner-up hangover I think I've seen in the AFL, just about. I, I can go one better. Uh, Port Adelaide, after Geelong, beat them by 119. Well, okay, fight. well, so, yeah. you've just... <laughs> You've just one up me there, but um, I've just pissed all over your. All point. right, this this might have to come in second. <laughs> no, it's a good call. It's a good call. Definitely, this has been concerning events at Adelaide, and I I guess maybe it will be beneficial for them to have a new sort of injection of culture, I guess, and also just have a fresh set of eyes run over the list and maybe get a bit of. Uh, positivity back in the club because it seems like it was a bit of a sinking ship this year. But we will move on to what is probably actually the biggest story to come out of last week or this week rather and that's Willy Rioli has been provisionally banned by Asada for some urine substitution um, and not in yeah. a good way. <laughs> 
<laughs> not like the way we used to do. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I don't... Please, please delete this video. <laughs> <laughs> the latest that we've heard, basically, and new and more information is coming to light in this saga, and I, I'd imagine it's going to continue to be that way for maybe up to about 12 months, but it sounds like B test sample came back negative for any illicit drugs or anything like that. So on face value, this bloke Rioli has just substituted his urine because he got frustrated that he couldn't produce enough piss. Does that story add up to you? To be honest, it's a bit of a tough one to buy. The whole situation is really weird. If he has done that, it's just beyond levels of stupid. If the charge is tampering, honestly, it doesn't doesn't really matter what what is in the B sample. If he's guilty of tampering, he's going to have to cop something. Now, four years for me is extremely excessive. I don't think he should cop four years. I think there's a good chance that there's a ban coming his way, to be honest. I remember when it when it first came to, to light, a lot of people in the media were sort of talking about how they were confused at how he's pulled off this, um, you know, this thing is like, as they said, they literally watch it coming out of you. Um, so how's he done it? And that's, that still remains a mystery for me. The other thing is as well, like this, this rule is, is in place to protect against people tampering with the sample so that they can drug cheat. There is literally nothing in the provision that protects against a player who tampers with the drug sample for no reason. There's no, there's no legislation. It's not legislated for that. So I, I don't know. I think the the best case scenario he's got, and this is from reading from other people who maybe have a stronger opinion, and more, I'm certainly more knowledgeable in this area for me, is that if he can prove he didn't deliberately tamper with the sample, then it could be two years. But even then, best case scenario is a two-year ban. And do you think West Coast would keep him on the books uh, if he copped a two-year ban? I'd like to think he'd be given another chance, but I wouldn't blame West Coast for uh, letting him go. Once his contract's done, he, he could get his contract torn up, to be honest. I'd like to see him get another go at AFL level. You know, I, I don't don't think people should be made to pay for the rest of their lives about stupid mistakes like, like he's made. But, you know, questions will be asked. Will he be able to spend two, three years away from AFL and come back? I'm... To be honest, I'm not so sure that he will. I agree with you. Obviously, he has a ha- uh, has a history of like weight issues, and I think if he's not playing professional football, it's going to be hard for him to stay disciplined enough to be, you know, in the condition to come back. There's no doubting his talent because at 28 years old, he's I'm sure he's still good enough to play AFL. Unfortunately for me, as a West Coast fan, I can't see us holding on to him if it's longer than a year ban. And I, my prediction is, unfortunately, that he will probably spend two years out of the game and then get the fairy tale finish at Richmond, winning a premiership with his cousin. And Daniel just to absolutely piss all over me and uh, st- stick the dagger through my heart. Just out of interest, I'm not sure if you saw Sumich's comments the other day where he sort of alluded to a cultural problem at West Coast. What did you think of his comments? And it sounds like there might be an investigation into how it's happened. Are you worried about that at all, Jesse? No, not really uh, because, well, I mean, first of all, the, the SADA weren't testing for illicit drugs and I just between, oh, not, no, I won't say just between you and me because we're probably going to get a thousand plus views on this. But um, <laughs> my opinion is that illicit drugs is probably everywhere in the league. Do you know what I mean? I don't think that's a cultural issue. I certainly don't think performance enhancing drugs are a cultural issue at West Coast. <laughs> My, yeah. opinion, my opinion on the Sumich thing is honestly that he just worded it really stupidly and it sounded like he was throwing shade at West Coast. Yeah. I don't yeah. necessarily think he was. And of course, you get opportunistic journalists who will frame it in a way that he was suggesting that. But personally, I just think he's a, I think he's a bit of a douche, Sumich. Um, and well. Probably, uh, oh, I'm, I'm certainly not the only Eagles fan who thinks that. I think he's very yeah. anti-West Coast now. Probably because he's leveling for the Fremantle job for a start. Yeah. Um, but anyway, no, to, to answer your question, I'm not too concerned by anything like that. And at the end of the day, we we are kind of led to believe right now that Rioli didn't actually test positive for anything. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, before we finish off the video of this True Footy Reacts, man, I do have to get your prelim tips because it is the second biggest week of the AFL season. So, of course, we've got Richmond and Geelong, I believe, on the Friday night. So, who are you liking for that matchup? You know, you can't go past Richmond for this game. My mind instantly says Richmond. You know, I don't think... 
Geelong were actually that top, top level against West Coast. I think both of those teams were a little down. I'm fully expecting Richmond to win this game, to be honest. Yeah, I do agree with you. And I think Tom Hawkins is an idiot for that ridiculous punch on Schofield behind the play. I know he didn't hit him hard, but when your team's playing for a spot in the prelim, potentially a grand final, what an idiot thing to do. And I think without him, they've got even less of a chance. So that sucks. Um, and what about the other prelim man that we're hoping to do a live stream and you're going to make your live stream debut, fingers crossed, on Saturday. So, Collie, we're playing GWS. This one, I actually think it's a bit of a tough one to call. GWS really impressed me against Brisbane. I think that's one of the best defensive performances of the year, maybe the best. Haynes, Phil Davis, Zach Williams, all 10 out of 10 games. And they're going to have to do it again. Collingwood is so good going forward, but no Dugowie. I I got a feeling this one might be a little bit closer than what a lot of people are going to going to think. I'm I'm going to go out on a whim. I'm going to tip an upset and book a GWS Richmond grand final. That sounds Awful to me because I think Richmond would have killed them in the grand final. But uh, what I will ask you to finish off a video, what's your preferred grand final matchup if you got to choose? Look, if, if I got to choose, I'd probably choose Collingwood-Richmond, um, a big, you know, Melbourne grand final. You know, there's always a little bit more passion and that comes out when it's two big clubs like Richmond and Collingwood. Having said that, I'm a firm believer in whoever is there on the day is the person that deserves to be there. If Collingwood don't show up against GWS, then you know I'm not going to have any sympathy for them, despite how well they've played in some patches this year. Very good call. I like it. All right. Thanks very much, Joycey, for your views as ever. It is a pleasure to have you on the True Footy YouTube channel. This has been another True Footy Reacts uh, and something that gets we get asked for this type of video quite a fair bit but it is uh it's fun to actually do them if you're new to the channel make sure you hit subscribe to the true footy channel because we're going to be doing more content throughout uh obviously the grand final and the off season we're going to be doing podcasts we're going to be doing interviews and potentially have a big guest lined up which joycey i'll tell you about off air so cool all right thanks guys see you later see ya